Hey, hey, what up, socialites, and welcome back to the Social Studies Podcast with me, Joe Dombrowski. And me, Gaspar Randazzo. We got a lot of wedding stuff to talk to you guys about, but before we do, we want to plug our dates. The show My Straight Friends that I'm doing will be in Seattle on July 11th. We, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. It's Portland, Oregon. We're going to do the show in Portland, Oregon on July 11th. Our boy Sam Salem is going to be one of the comics who's on that with us. I'm, we're in Seattle, July 17th. And then My Straight Friends will be at the Comedy Store in the Belly Room every first Wednesday starting in August regular tour doesn't start up again until September. I will be in Irvine, San Jose, Sacramento, Charleston, Charlotte, Boston, New York, Winnipeg, Atlantic City, <laughs> Atlantic City, New, New, um, what's the, that place Newark? called in Jersey? Newark, yeah. <laughs> Toronto, Portland, Maine, Chicago, and Atlanta. Get your tickets at thejoedombrowski.com. And before, Joe, before I even tell you my dates, I'm looking very yellow right now. And it's crazy because everybody keeps commenting me on how tan I look. But for some reason, mm -hmm. these lights have me. I'm looking a little jaundicey. So, all right. So jaundicey. Jaundicey. That's the plural of jaundice. I will be in L.A., San Francisco, Long Island, New York City, Boston, Washington, D.C., Tampa, Cleveland, Detroit, Manchester, Tennessee, Atlanta, Staten Island, Freehold, New Jersey, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Columbus, Cincinnati, Allentown, Grantville, uh, just added Raleigh, North Carolina. I will be at Good Nights over there. Uh, then Rochester and Manasquan, New Jersey. Get your tickets at Gasparandazzo.com. Joseph. Dombrowski slash insert Don't new married name here. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> um, how does it feel to be married? Amazing. I just want to stop and say a couple of things too. One, hands down, best weekend of my life to date. Had the best wedding it was everything I ever wanted. It was everything that I ever thought it could be. It was more than I ever thought it could be. And I just, Morgan and I were just, we keep reliving it. I just want to fill my house with pictures from it. Like I had the most amazing, amazing, amazing time at my wedding. And I just, I, I'm so happy about it. I'm like, so through the friggin' roof about it. Yeah. Like I'm glad I was there to celebrate it with you. You know, it was cool. And speaking of you being there, check your phone. So you guys, I didn't, I, Gasper and I were kind of like texting during the day. And then when I was walking down the aisle right after I officially got married, I'm like looking at all my friends and boom, there's Gasper <laughs> on the end right in front of me. He stopped and gave you a hug. This I just a got, picture that's of cute. Us. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny. So, yeah. Your mom texted me and she goes, she goes, I love that Joey was walking down the aisle after saying I do and then stopped. In front of everybody. I give, was so excited to see like, you. He stopped and gave you a hug at, on, in front of everybody. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. When I was telling yeah. Melissa, she's like, you stopped him as he was walking down the aisle. I said, I was just there and he was coming down the aisle. I was like, well, you guys, you got to keep in mind this too. We're going to let you in on all these details. It wasn't just a wedding. I had a three day wedding. It was a weekend. So day one, which Gasper couldn't make it to because he, you were still in school. I'm so <laughs> bummed you couldn't make it, but you were still in school. The first day, um, Morgan and I rented out a uh, tugboat. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little tugboat, little tugboat with open bar on it, you know, uh, music, food for everybody. Just like a sunset cruise that we did for all our guests because most of most people came in um, from out of state. So 95% of our guests were not from Seattle. Well, and that's what I was trying to explain to Melissa too. I was like, a lot of people, I was like, saw Joe the day before. I was like, I didn't yeah. see him. So I was like, so when we saw each other at the wedding. You I were one like, of the I'm, only people there were, there's yeah. only 10 people who were not on the boat the day before who were at the wedding. So when I was walking by, I had seen all these people, everyone yeah. we were sitting with, everyone. I saw them all the day before on the boat. And then I saw you and I was like, holy shit. So I was very excited to see you. So, um, the boat, there's a couple funny stories about the boat. One, so Morgan and I stood at the end of the dock and then while everyone was getting onto the Sunset Cruise, 
uh, we would greet them as they were coming in, say hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. And there was there was actually a boat that was taking off behind our boat for a different something. And uh, Morgan and I go out there to greet people. The first thing that happens, this group of women goes, oh my God, are we at your wedding? And I was like, no. And they go, we think we are. We were at your show last weekend. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, that's so wild. So I stopped and took a selfie with them. They're very sweet. But then this couple didn't speak any English, go up to our wedding planners and they were like, trying to communicate and they weren't they weren't on our guest list and our wedding planners are like you guys go on the second boat and i turn and they were getting on our boat and apparently it was like a guy and his wife and he just went up grabbed a glass of champagne was ordering a drink at the bar before anyone realized and the captain was like you're on the other boat and went and got him on the other boat Should've and just i'm let him so stay. pissed wouldn't that have been great you know everybody would have been like hey you're the strangers just them just <laughs> riding around so on funny. a boat on someone's wedding yeah. boat <laughs> yeah so then we ended up going out afterwards uh we kind of had an after party to that i have so many people went and just drink we were out drinking for forever i don't know how we made it the next day but we did it was amazing and uh, then the wedding happened. Wait, wait, before you um, get to the wedding, I have a question. Is it like, did you guys sleep in separate houses the night before your wedding? No, we said, fuck it. We were like, this isn't. It, no, I don't know. I don't know how not, it works. It isn't, a, it isn't a traditional wedding anymore anyway. We're two guys. So we're like, whatever. So yeah, we slept at our house. Um, your and, mom uh, stayed with you? Your parents stayed with you? Nursed her. No, no, no. They stayed with us earlier in the week, but as time went on, they stayed in a hotel. Okay. So we were by ourselves. We were just getting unhung over. And then we got ready for the wedding. Our photographer came over and, uh, and we left. So we go to the wedding to start taking pictures and getting ready and all that too. And I'm going to tell people this story. So you guys, I've been really keeping the wedding under wraps because I just like didn't want anything to be ruined. Like, first of all, when my ha when Morgan and I got our house, like some creepy ass fans fucking found it. Listen, there's crazy people in the world. That's the reality of it. We put our, we got married and we sent our invitations out and somehow our website got leaked. Like it was just a bunch of fuckery. So I'm like, I'm not even talking about the wedding. So it's over. Now I can. I got married at Chihuly Glass Gardens in, in Seattle, Washington, which have you ever been to something like that before? No, I was like, a, for those of you at home, picture like a giant glass house, like a greenhouse. And like you're just plants and you're just inside this. It was just like a, a glass dome with like these really pretty chairs. And then some like famous guy who blew wind he like made all this crystals that just like were like moss all around the glass, but they were like these beautifully blown crystals. Did I explain and that? Then did, not really, but I'll let it. I'll let people think I had fucking crack crystals all over. <laughs> no, like picture Jesus like Christ. you're in a cave. Did you walk through the gallery? Did I, well, you tell your version of it, and then I'm gonna tell my version of the wedding. Anyway, when I had forty eight rice balls I, in the in the. In an art museum. <laughs> <laughs> We've barely talked about this, you guys. All we right. haven't spoken because we were waiting so, for this episode, but now it's a week past. So a good. long time ago, like over a year ago, I put on on I put out on my Instagram. I was like, yo, does anyone have the hookup for a like a string quartet? Right? In Seattle. One of the fans writes me and is like, hey, look up this guy. So I get on the phone with this guy and I'm like, yo, the vision for this wedding is I want during my wedding, during the dinner and during our cocktail hour, I want a string quartet playing early 2000s, late 90s, hip hop, rap and gay bangers on string quartet, like in the style of Bridgerton, if you're familiar. I don't know. But when laughed. I told people about your wedding, they were like, oh, it's like Bridgerton. I'm like, yeah, I guess. So then the guy goes, he's laughing at me. And I go, oh, is that possible? And he goes, yeah, I wrote the music for Bridgerton. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? We've he's talked like, about yeah, this on you, the podcast. 
we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, for those of you who are new here, he goes, not only will you can you use any of the songs that I've written before, if you have songs that you want, I'll rewrite it for you and play it at your wedding. So we had like milkshake. We had my neck, my back, like Britney <laughs> Spears toxic, like just like I couldn't believe it. And then people were listening and I was watching people get a cocktail and they'd turn and be like, uh, is this salt and pepper? I'm like, it is. <laughs> it was so cool. So the cocktail hour happens and I didn't see anybody during this time. So you were walking through the gallery. Well, all right. So let's backtrack a little so then we could get my like I went, you know, where and then we'll get to the same point where we got together. So basically I landed in, I left my house at 430 in the morning. I got to Seattle at like 11. I, I mean, I get back to the hotel and I'm like, all right, let me just get food. I'm starving. I was like, I'll go to like this famous like where they throw the fish and where the first Starbucks was, whatever that was called, the port, port market. <laughs> Pike Place Pike Market. Pike Place Market. So I was like, whatever, I'll get pickpocketed, you know, because I've heard about Seattle. So I walk, I'm walking <laughs> to get robbed. And he says from fucking New York. <laughs> and as I'm walking, these two guys are looking at me and they're like, are, you're Gasper? And I was like, uh, maybe. And then they're like, are you go you're, you're going to Joe's wedding? And I was like, well, I don't know. Like, are you? Because like, I didn't want to give away information. Right. I didn't know like, because, you know, whatever. So I was, and then they were like, oh, where is so-and-so? Started talking, super nice guys. And uh, so I ended up going out for lunch with them. They were great. We hung out. We went out. Yes, they listen to the podcast. And what they don't know is you referred to them in a text message to me when you didn't know their names yet as Bert and Ernie. No, no, no. <laughs> I oh, no, 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 no. You misconstruing that. <laughs> you know what? Great time for a break. Yeah, guys. And you know what's even better than a break? Cooking with Green Chef. Okay. Green Chef gives you a healthy lifestyle with easy and delicious menu recipes like fresh seasonal salads and grained bowls, okay? Every week, there's a different rotation that you can have that can suit the variety of different lifestyles. They got the Mediterranean diet. They got plant-based stuff. They got calorie smart, keto, even gluten-free ones, which you know, obviously, we're using in my house because my wife doesn't like fun and we eat celiac. Um, they also have like stuff that's like dedicated to people for their gut and their brain health with science backed recipes that feature ingredients like fiber antioxidants and omega three fatty acids. Joe, let me just tell you something. I had a green chef order come to my house, right? So I was like, oh, it was, um, like a curry pineapple chicken taco. And I was like, this sounds delicious. It was first day of summer break. It was about 8.30 in the morning. And I was like, you know what? I'm making it. I made the whole entire thing. I cooked it. It was 8.30. I was done cooking it by like 8.50. Uh, instead of like frying it in the pan, I made it in the air fryer. Obviously, they send you all the ingredients. It was like, open this little packet of garlic and herbs and put it on the chicken. Then it was like, squeeze this lime. Do this. Do that. I put it all in. It was delicious. I ate it. My kids ate it. It was 8.50 in the morning. Everybody had a great first day of summer break. So go to greenchef.com slash social studies 50 and use code social studies 50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. That's go to greenchef.com slash social studies 50 and use code social studies 50 to get 50% off plus 20% off your next two months. So wait, what you what I what we didn't say is when you said, oh, there's also a parade going on where everybody's naked. And I said, guys and girls. And you're like, yes. And I was like, oh, I'll convince the two guys to take me to the parade. I'll convince Bird Dirty to take me. <laughs> I no, not true. Um <laughs> so, Did you guys go? To the parade? Yes. No, because uh one of them wanted to work out, the other one wanted a nap. And I was gonna, I wanted to just explore a little. So like, it was fine. So yeah. we, we went out to eat. So we go out to eat. Then what was funny, so we go back, right? And then they're like, all right, we're gonna go with another couple to the wedding. So I'm like, all right, cool. So like meet in the lobby at 6.30. So now I'm sitting down in the lobby at 6.30 and these two people get out of the elevator, a guy and a girl dressed really nice. And they're like, oh, Gasper. And they said, so I was like, oh, hey, all right. I guess we're ready to go. So I like, 
start walking with them and they're like walking with me to the door and they're like, where are you going? I'm like, aren't we Ubering to the wedding together? They were like, no. I'm like, oh, I was like, <laughs> Who was I, it? I don't, they were going to your wedding, but they just weren't the other couple that we were waiting for. Hilarious. So I just walked out with another couple. And then, so that was that. Then I was like, my suit was a little tight for sure. It was, uh, it didn't button all the way. Like I could button it if I sucked in. So, and then my pants were a little tight. So then when I met up with the group of guys that I was sitting with, which was a lot of guys who came with other guys. And uh, so I meet up with them and I, I go to a bar with them before the show, before the wedding. And I'm like, yeah, my suit's a little tight. I'm like, my pants are a little tight. And one of them, I don't know. I forget. I don't know his name. There was a lot of people. He just looks at me. He goes, dude, you have the loosest pants out of this whole group. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you don't got tight pants. I was like, and then I looked down. I'm like, yeah. I think it was you and three gay couples. It was. No, and four yeah, gay yeah. couples. Four gay couples? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. Whoa. Who was the fourth? Bert and Ernie, I don't even know. Then you got. <laughs> Describe them. Describe I don't, them. I don't know who the first three you were. were that... With the two real, like, fucking, like, beefcake jacked guys. I think I know you were with them. That was Then one... you were with the chef and the dermatist. <laughs> Everyone's laughing. The way people are describing the gays at my wedding are so funny. It's like the two beefcake bodybuilders. Why? They were The chef and the dermatologist. Yeah. Bert and two of them were, yeah. Were they together, the bodybuilders? You were you were with the bodybuilders, the chef and the dermatologist, and Bert and Ernie. Were the two bodybuilders a couple? Yes. Okay. I was with I was with the, There's a whole lot of steak going on in that ass, boy. I was with four though, couples, I thought. That's oh, four? I, honestly, I don't know. All right, anyway. So <laughs> it's all a blur. Happy pride. <laughs> so they were like laughing at me. They're like, dude, your pants aren't tight. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Actually, another funny part with Richie, who is Oh, who, love it. You met Richie finally. Of course. Well, I just I was just walking around talking to everybody. You know, I don't care. Whatever. But did you know Richie when you saw well, as soon him? As I saw him, I was like, Oh, I was like, Richie. And he was like, Gasper. Like, we have talked oh, great, online. Great, 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 you know great. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, it Richie's was great. funny. So I was love like, Richie. I was like, wow, Richie's got. At one point, Richie was dancing. So Richie uh, came with his um, uh, guy. I don't know if it's his boyfriend. I don't know. No, I didn't know. It is his boyfriend. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. So Richie came with his boyfriend. So at one point, Richie's dancing, right? And I was like saying to Doctor Jody, I go I, to one of Joe's friends. I go, oh yeah, Doctor Jody Carrington was there from Canada. I go. Wow, Richie's got such cool style. I'm gonna copy that. So Richie had his sleeves rolled up. So I rolled my sleeves up. Then Richie started like doing this dance moves, like kicking his leg. And I was like, oh, I could do that. So I started doing the dance moves. So I look at Joey, I go, I'm gonna copy everything Richie does. Literally, as those words came out of my mouth, Richie turns and just starts humping his boyfriend, kissing him. And I'm like, eh, never mind. I ain't doing nothing Richie's doing. I'll tell you fuck that. <laughs> so, but it was really funny. Then, so after Joe walks down the aisle in the glass house, they then escorted all of us into this art museum where some glass blower blew a bunch of glass. So we walk through it and in like every room, it's like whatever like the glass blow was, it was like the food like seemed to match it. So like in one room, there was like a bunch of balls blown into glass and then they served rice balls. Joe, these rice balls were the best thing I ever had. Arancino? Shut right? up. Arancini, yeah. I ate, I'm not kidding, I had about 15 of them to the point where I said to the lady, I go, come straight to me when you come out with the next batch. She goes, you're eating them all. I go, there's so many rice balls for everybody. I go, please, I need these because I don't eat fish. And like they had crab right. cake. I was just, I ate so many. And then every, then I guess she told the other waiters, and waitresses, anytime they had left over any food, they would just bring it right to me and be like, here, finish this. So I ate a ton in the appetizer section. All right. So now we're at the wedding. So go ahead. First of all, you know how many rice balls I had? Probably none. None. That seems sad for you because they were that the good. The only appetizer okay so then you get out of the gallery you guys and we set up like an outdoor speakeasy situation with like it was like a lounge with couches and tables and a huge bar and they're still shuffling out a bunch of appetizers the only appetizer i got is i had one stuffed squash blossom that's all I. oh had. that was cool too 
Didn't really understand good. it, but I liked it. It was like <laughs> stuffed with like, it was like a, it was like, you know, like, it's like a flour stuffed with goat cheese and it was deep exactly. fried and it was good. Yeah. And it had like a little syrup great. in it. It was, it had a, it was drizzled with a little hot honey. Hot honey. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> syrup. Hot honey. Drink of the night was espresso martinis. Did you scarf down any of those? No, nah, I didn't drink anything. Nothing the whole night. I don't drink. And you know, it's funny. I know you don't. What was nice was Jeff went and got me a drink. So he came back mm -hmm. with some non-alcoholic drink. Because he knew, yeah. And I was like, oh, thanks. So I just assumed it was alcohol. So I'm drinking it. And I'm like, I don't even taste anything in here. And he's like, yeah, there's no alcohol. And I'm like, but I'm not, like, I don't have a problem with drinking. Like, I could But you did. So that's why we're here now. No, it's definitely not. I never had a problem <laughs> with drinking. Gasper was running around the, showing his coin to everybody. No, I was not. Um, I don't, I don't drink, but I was like, so then finally I was like, you could have got me a drink. So then I had a Corona. I think I had like half of a Corona at your wedding. So I did drink a yeah. little. So go ahead. So what's now? So then we got, you got married and then. Fast forward, dinner happens. Fast forward, the band, the quartet switched and now the band comes out to play, right? Dancing's happening. Fun. Amazing. Uh, Another highlight that I loved is I had shout out to um, Shugs in Seattle who custom made uh, blood orange sherbet and lemon oh, sherbet sor delicious. sorbet, I should say, served in a frozen hollowed out orange. Amazing. So yeah, that all happened. I had two of those. I turn from the corner of my eye. All of a sudden I see uh, there's dancing happening on the dance floor. People are Dick Gasper. I've never been to a wedding where that many people were dancing for that long. Like the dance floor opened and it was full until we were done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the band see was a little great. shuffle. The music's just playing. I see like a little scuffle. Oh, also my one of my my absolute best friend from high school has four kids now. Hasn't traveled away and had a weekend away with her husband since 2012. This was her first time. Wasted. Love her to death. Drinking, drinking, drinking. Next I meet thing her? you know, grabs the microphone from the woman at the band. Were you? Was your shit happening? Your little catastrophe at this time. I don't you, know if, if, if you don't remember this, you were having your issue, which we'll get into in a minute. Grabs the microphone from the lead singer. She goes, "I just want to say, this is the best fucking wedding <laughs> we've ever been to." And fuck yeah for these hot ass grooms and everyone just goes crazy. I was like, I didn't oh hear that. My God, I turned to Morgan. Morgan's jaw fucking falls to the ground because what she didn't know is that there was a little clause in the uh, contract that said if anyone rushed the stage, that the band had the right to like stop playing and leave. Oh shit! So we were like, oh fuck, is this happening? Anyway, so anyway, did they anyway. say anything about it? The band. No, they were totally cool. They just had a little background music playing as she was talking, and then it went boom right back into the music. Anyway, I'm so, sure they probably just put that in case, like, oh people yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm dancing. I turn around. I see a little scuffle on the dance floor. People picking up some shit. A guy comes out with a mop, and I see Gasper getting whisked away <laughs> out of like the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh fuck! Now you take it away. <laughs> No, it, was, it had nothing to do with me. It was your fault. So you were, it was not my fault. You were talking, it had nothing to do with me. Your friend was holding a drink. And Ellen. Ellen, yeah. and you were dancing, or someone was dancing. I thought it was you. Your hand hit the drink, and it crashed into the floor. Ellen was on the floor trying to pick it up. I said, stop, you're in a dress. Don't do that. So I got on the floor, and I was sweeping it into my hand. And while I was sweeping it into my hand, I got all these shards of glass in my hand, and then I'm holding my hand and Ellen's like, let me help you. And she's putting more glass in my hand. And I, my hand was just bleeding like stigmata. And I'm like, uh, all right. So I didn't care. I just was holding all this glass. But they and whisked you to the back. So they, they got to all nervous. The, ner the, the place, they brought me into like a medical tent. <laughs> like she like had some makeshift <laughs> little closet and she's spraying my hand. So I said, let me wash my hand first. While I was washing my hand, it was like a sugar scrub. I was like, 
<laughs> just like all scraps of glass were falling out of my hand. And I was like, shit. Oh. I'm like, it's a lot of glass in my hand. So then they would just spray me with some back teen stuff and slap the bandaid on and I came back out. I didn't think it ruined anything. So it was fine. The funniest part is I talked to my friend who was back there with you while you were being tended to by the nurse. And she said the whole time people were just like putting alcohol and rubbing your hand and shit. And you were just like, oh, yeah, what do you do for work? And <laughs> how are you? And oh, I heard you work for the Lions. I'm coming to Detroit soon. Bah, 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 bah. Just yeah, like it didn't slinging bother tickets. Me. <laughs> I didn't care. I just had a lot of glass in my hand. It's, so we, we'll get to one of the best parts right now. Um, the after party. The wedding happens. The after party's going on. I see you in the parking lot for like a second and then you leave because you had to leave early. So well, you were there. Even here for this I part. was in the place. So, so, so there was an issue. Did you know what happened? So the after party is at this dope ass new bar in Seattle in Queen Anne called Rich Rich, right? I have everything planned. It was great. We're ready to go. And apparently, unknown to me, their air conditioning broke at 1030. So that's why it was like hot. It was than brutal. Rich's yeah. City in there. Yeah. And then I know hot. like the bathrooms in that place, there definitely was some one. holes in the, you know, stall door. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was not, you ass. But it seemed that's like hilarious. that kind of bar. Oh, no, it didn't. You're insane. So anyway, we're the after party. Shout out to the one and only Jets Pizza. There's no Jets Pizza around here. Somehow they made it happen. Jets Pizza is getting passed around. And then Morgan and I had a surprise for everybody. Morgan's favorite movie is Sister Act. I also love Sister Act. I've never seen and it. And I love Jets Pizza. So did you see the videos from this? Yeah, yeah, but I just never so saw I, it. Uh, I know what it's Morgan about. and I went out a couple days before the wedding and we bought probably 25 to 50 nuns habits and we played Hail Holy Queen, which is the last song in Sister Act where all the nuns are singing. And uh, we blast that shit and we passed out nuns outfits and everyone was singing and dancing to Sister Act, praying to Jet's Pizza Ranch Dressing. It was... A time of my life. Do you know? And I cue this bar closing at two and a bunch of nuns walking out. Half the nuns were my straight fraternity brothers. Oh, hilarious. it closed at two? Yeah. And then we had an after after party. Where was that? My friend Saloni's apartment. Oh, is that when you FaceTimed we up... me? Yeah. we Jeff and I FaceTimed you there. We didn't leave until 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. I walked out. The sun was out. I'm like, oh shit, this is insane. Yeah, I left. Time of my life. I left at like one thirty. I would say, the place yeah. about like yeah. one one o'clock, one thirty, and uh, also wait. Another funny thing was Morgan's mom came up to me, and she's yeah, like, oh yeah, Morgan's mom loved this is the podcast too. She was so cute. She was so sweet. She's like, "Hi, how you doing? I'm Morgan's mom." Blah, blah. So I was like, you know, I've actually never met him about Morgan. I've never met Morgan. For those of you listening, I've never met Morgan. So I was like, I actually never met, met him. And she's like, oh my God, that's crazy. She's like, I would have thought you guys did. I was like, yeah, we just never did. She's like, but you have such great chemistry. And I'm like, oh, you know, I mean, he's a nice guy and I get along with a lot of people. And she's like, wow, that's crazy. You never met. She thought I was talking yeah. about you. No, she thought. I was oh my about God. So, she so did you guys fill it in? Well, then I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess we have good chemistry. We never met. And she's like, yeah, but on the podcast. And I'm like, oh, oh, you mean the Joe? No, I've met Joe. <laughs> we were cracking up, though. She was really sweet. I have such great in-laws. I'm, yeah. They're the best. And then like Morgan's sisters and their kids. Everyone was so nice. They were great. So the wedding was so much. I had the best time of my life. I, uh, I. The next day, I was so hungover that I think I probably could have used some therapy. Oh, well, you know what's good for you, Joseph? This episode Tell is me. actually <laughs> brought to you by BetterHelp. So it's easy to feel jealous of other people's lives. You know, you hear about this wedding. It's beautiful. It's great. You know, you're eating rice balls in a glass blowing house, you know, and all this stuff. And sometimes it could just, it could, you know, put you in a little bit of a funk. But you know what's great? Therapy. Therapy is an amazing tool to help you focus on what you want out of life instead of what everybody else is doing. Forget the new houses, the flashy cars, all that stuff. Better help. It's amazing. It's 100% online therapy. 
you can schedule sessions that work for you so it's easy to fit into your daily life. Talk with your therapist by phone, message, or video call, or whatever makes you feel most comfortable, okay? Listen, guys, therapy is great because it gives you somebody, an opportunity to have somebody who's not a family or a friend. You know, you know, it's judgment-free. You have the opportunity to talk to somebody who can actually give you real advice and not just tell you what you want to hear because they're your friends or tell you what you need to hear because they're your family. They can give you objective, objective or subjective, the one where they're not judging you and putting their own opinion into it. So it, it can help everybody, okay? All you got to do is fill out a quick questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist and you'll be on your way to a happier life. So stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash social studies today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash social studies. Joe, we asked yes. in the Patreon. We asked in the Patreon. Patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. Um, we um, asked in the Patreon to if anyone had any questions about the wedding and boy did Patreon deliver because we got so many questions about your wedding and we're going to read them all and you're going to answer them all, Let's Joseph. Do it. Let's so, go. Let's go. All right. So shout out to the Patreones. Thanks for being there. All right. Oh my God. Just saw you were married at the Chaguli Gardens. Swoon. Chaguli Glass Chihuly Gardens. Chaguli Gardens. That's what they wrote. He called it Chaguli. That's like Italian food from Staten Island. Yo, come over here. Try this Chaguli. Hey, yo. Oh, Try some of this Chaguli, yeah? Um, you wanna? My mom's got the best Chaguli in all the island of Staten, eh? I'm from the Glass City and have been surrounded by glass artists my whole life. The Glass City of Chaguli. What's Sorry, the Glass people. City? Uh, is that the shall neighborhood? I look it? Shall I look it up? But I, that must be the neighborhood where you were. It's not. Oh. I'm from the, the glass, glass city. city. is Toledo, Ohio. Mm, I'm going to say no. Okay. All right. No, I believe you. Why? Toledo, Ohio, the glass capital of the world. Toledo, Ohio is fondly known as the glass city because it's the glass capital of the world. You know where I went once? <laughs> what a sentence. That's like a fourth grader writing as an essay. Um, I like the most, the thing I <laughs> like most the about glass Washington city they is, have glass. is that they have DC. Um, uh, it didn't make any sense, but you know. Um, uh, speaking of glass cities, one time I went, you ever go to a ghost speaking town? Speaking of glass city, this podcast is brought to you by the glass city. Did you ever go to a ghost town? No, but I'm going to go ahead and guess you have. Well, in Arizona once, we went to a ghost town and there was a full house made of glass. A full house made of Jaguli? <laughs> I don't know what it was made of. It was made of, it was made of recycled bottles. Oh, hell yeah. It was pretty cool. All right, Joseph, what was your favorite part of the wedding aside from the actual wedding reception? The whole weekend. What was your favorite part of the weekend? Sorry. Of the weekend? Aside um, from the Morgan's wedding reception. I was super nervous about the wedding vows and Morgan's vows were the most unbelievable thing I've ever heard him say. It was, yeah, it was so sweet. meaningful and important. It was very sweet. So that's what you, that was the best part? Yeah, it was unbelievable. And, and, and I'll never take a wedding for granted again. Being invited to a wedding is like so important. Like you don't understand until you get married. Like you were invited to, like you made a list of people that they care about. They want you to come to this thing. Like it's an honor to get invited to anybody's wedding, right? And to be or in the curse. room and to look around and to see all of these people from both of your lives who are so important to you come together so cool it's so beautiful. yeah that is it's a cool like, part it's such god it just i i i, I loved it i left feeling like i'm not gonna lie like i said no to a lot of weddings in the past too and you know it's it's a lot to go to a wedding it's asking a lot of a person but it is so friggin amazing once you've lived through it i love weddings it's such a cool thing i mean what's crazy is like you and also being that your wedding was like 
a destination wedding for a lot of people. Pretty so, much. So like that must have been cool to see like how many people were willing to fly to like come for yeah. a weekend. That's the part that kind of like was unbelievable to me too is like I couldn't believe the people a lot of the people who I thought they would just be like thank you so much and not able to come actually did come and it was just like it was nuts Gasper it was like so nuts to just like watch people come of all walks of life come together and you know yeah I just it was now, yeah you amazing. definitely like leave your wedding like holy shit like people like me <laughs> like yeah people just came yeah all right did you get to eat? Did you eat anything? Did you Hell do yeah, anything I got to eat. you swore you wouldn't do? All right, first, did you Here, eat? Here's the thing. One, I got to eat. Barely. Yeah. After And then the after, we had this traditional Polish thing the day after the wedding called a Popravini, which to sum it up is pretty much just like a brunch. It's typically at somebody, a relative's house that they put on for you. But since no one lives here, my aunt put it on for me at my house. And um, it was great. It was amazing. It's just kind of like a send off, say goodbye to people, eat and drink before you leave, right? We had so much food at it, double the people that we thought would come because there's no RSVPs for this thing. It's just like if you feel good the day of go, if you don't, don't, no big deal. Double the people we thought would come. We ran out of food, ordered pizzas, ran out of pizzas, ordered more pizzas, ran out of pizzas, ran out of vodka, ran out of everything. I had one tiny little pastry that whole day. And then at my wedding, did I eat? Yes. Did I eat enough? Absolutely not. I ate barely anything. Couldn't believe it. Um, and by the third day, he rose again. And I was just like, done. Morgan was like, I think I lost weight. Did you take Same. food home? No, you couldn't have. The majority of my calories for the weekend were alcohol. Jets pizza. Jets pizza. You know, I did. it's I funny. I didn't even try the Jets night. pizza and I'm mad at myself. Crazy. That so is crazy. Full. I was so full. Yeah, I bet you were. Because I yeah, ate the those rice balls and I had balls. the steak. Then I had this thing called chur churno. What was yeah. it? That soup thing you got? Uh, bushi. Bushi. The hell? Busha. <laughs> it was like a soup the that hell? they served in the beginning. Oh. <laughs> That's called uh, um, an amuse bouche. And that's just an amuse bouche just means a tiny little one bite of something to get your meal started. But it could be anything. It could be like a tiny little piece of a puff pastry with a little salmon on it. It can be like a cracker okay. with cheese. It could be a, a thing of caviar, whatever. That but... makes so much more sense. Yeah, ours was, it Shoop. was a compressed summer melon salad. Yeah. So this amuse bouche, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what bullshit is this one bite? I was sitting there. You were <laughs> I ordered another one. I was like, bring out more bouches, whatever. It was delicious, but it was so small. I was like, who's this? supposed to be. Yeah, I was like, who's this feeding? So I was like, Jeff, give me yours. Like, I was eating everybody's on the tables because I was like, how is this supposed to fill a person? <laughs> hey, yo, give me your bouche. And then it was like, they were like, do you want the salad, sir? I'm like, yeah, sure. It was like asparagus with like cheese. But then like they like took a flamethrower and like burnt the cheese. It was delicious. But I was starved. I was so I was like, where's that rice ball lady? I was like, bring out her and her boosh boosh. You know? All right. What songs were on your do I not you playlist? Turned down for what was not on there. And like, I didn't want any of like the wobble or the cha-cha slide or nothing like that. Yeah. Pretty much just songs like that. But that, the band actually told us, they're like, tell us songs that you do like and we will curate a playlist off of that. That makes sense. And the band killed it. And I was so happy because they played very popular songs that like every, the majority of people would know. There was not one song played that I don't think people knew. No, everyone knew everything. One of the biggest hits was Nine to Five by Dolly Parton. Yes, everyone went crazy went during that. Yeah, that uh, was good. Any funny mishaps that happened on the wedding day? You cutting your hand. I didn't cut my hand. I, Me. I was oh, cut more, by your funny friend. mishap. Get, uh, we both didn't know how to tie a bow tie and we also forgot to learn. So we were running late because Morgan and I were in the bathroom with our photographer on watching YouTube? YouTube videos on how to tie a bow tie. Yeah, the group of guys that I ended up meeting up with beforehand, none of them knew how to tie a bow tie. They were talking about it on YouTube. All right. Were they all wearing bow ties? I didn't even remember. Some of them did. 
Uh, did you feed each other cake? Hell no. Maybe we did. I don't, I don't think know. you did. But there was there was no hidden cake in the face. I hate that shit. That's a... Oh, I meant you to tell you. You told me. That's yeah. when your dad would take money That's out. That's money out. Because every wedding I he also, ever went to... I ran I, up, you guys. It was We were so... Do you remember? You know what I'm going to yeah, say? Yeah, I know what you're going to we say. We were so... We were so pressed for time. But we did the boat the day before, right? So we weren't able to go around from table to table to say hello to everybody. Because we, we were just... But I was like, ah, I saw all these people at the thing. I saw all these people at the at the boat, right? So I did see every single person. Absolutely. I run up to Gasper's table before and I go, hey guys, got to say hello to this table so Gasper doesn't take money out of the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so funny because I wrote a check, but then I was like to Muss, I was like, I was like, oh, I should put cash and tell John I'm going to take money out. But then, uh, <laughs> but then of course, I, I, so like I I didn't know anybody at the wedding really I didn't like I was just making oh friends. my god that's so crazy too because you got along with everybody no I mean I I, I wasn't like worried about making friends I just but uh, it was funny because Jeff I, I knew Jeff Jeff was laughing because or someone yeah because I had I yeah take, if you don't know Jeff's a very good friend of mine and he used to work for me so you might remember him on this podcast I taped the envelope shut because. I was worried like that when my luggage went through with TSA, maybe they'll try to take some out. I don't know. So I was like, fuck, I'm taping it. So I taped the envelope. So just like everyone's cards are like so dainty and nice. And mine was just taped shut. Also, did you see the card I gave you? No, I only are able to open half of them. I'm I'm trying to open gifts and write a thank you at the same um, time. So it's taking right, a little I'm gonna longer tell than you I now. No, nah, just when you open it, you'll know. Okay, okay. Don't tell me I haven't gotten ears. All right. Yet. What was your song that you guys did as husband and husband? Our wedding song I is guess. Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Golden Shower? I hope to God it's not Golden Shower. <laughs> Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Uh, did Gasper dance? If so, is there evidence? I danced, but I don't. I'm Gasper, not... I remember one point of the night came and grabbed my mom from the table and was just dancing uh, with yeah, my it was. mom. It was very cute. And your aunt, your dad's yep. sister, she was so yeah, cute. She yeah. stopped me. She was like, oh. she was very excited to meet you. Yeah, I know. I felt bad. I was like, they oh. all watched the show. Did anyone come up to you that were like, hey, were you on the show? That, no, like, didn't know you were going to be there. Much knew. Well, you know what was funny? People like didn't know how to like approach me as they were like, you're Joe's. I'm like friend friend <laughs> like like i'm not his mistress <laughs> or they'd be like oh my god you're joe's part uh not partner i'm like well like i am his partner but in this scenario it seems like the wrong word to use at a wedding with involving two men um but it was so funny like because some people like just didn't know what to say right like because like That's everyone so pretty much like knew someone or came as a big group or like had a role, and then I'm just like some random guy from New York. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Did you meet Morgan's family from New York? They had a, some family from Long Island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she was Syracuse. sitting at my table. No. Oh, I met a girl who's from Long Island, but now lives out in Seattle. Oh, Sabina and Spencer. Yeah, yeah. they were at your table. Yep. You yeah. had a cool table. Yeah, I, had, I mean, whatever. Um, what was wrong? <laughs> I hated them. I, didn't, I had a great time. I was with Jeff. I was with Jody. I was with the girl who cut my hand open with glass. Um, Alan. Um, all right. <clears throat> I want to hear what wrong at what went wrong at your wedding. Whose shoe flew off while dancing? Uh, who I had sex we did that in the bathroom? Already. Yeah, we did this. No, I haven't heard any of that yet. It wasn't mm -hmm. me. How did Joe and Morgan's parents do with big speeches? Were there tears? Were there mother-son dances? Little speeches. What we did is we kind of wanted to break traditions and do our own thing. So we had tiny micro speeches that were like supposed to be two minutes or less. No, they were. They did a great job. It was very cute. Um. All right. Let's see. Okay. To Joe, what were the top three things that were important to you and Morgan that you spent money on at your wedding? What's like the what Say was it again? What was the most thing that was important to you that you were willing to spend money on for the wedding? That's a great question. Like this is what she wrote. For example, at my wedding, I didn't care about the price. I went crazy on flowers and spent fifteen thousand dollars on flowers. 
oh my god that's insane Mm -hmm. i the flowers were beautiful our flowers very cool we wanted originally we wanted 40 we had a vision because so instead we went with 30 (laughs) our our colors were kind of very very like citrusy so originally we wanted branches of kumquats coming out of the table bouquet so people could like pick and eat like as they were doing but kumquats were out of season so instead she did branches of dogwood tree which a dogwood flower is the north carolina state flower morgan's from north carolina it was just very thoughtful and very cool i was very pleased with all the floral arrangements yeah, they were um, beautiful. Like the vase. Like I wanted you. to take a bath in the vase. The vases were, they were huge. Huge. I couldn't huge. believe how big they were. The oh my god. Picture it was the vase like a, a bathtub, but bigger. And like more it was fucking huge. More like up. So, um, but one thing that I'm glad I spent money on is probably two things. Our wedding planners were unbelievable. Perfect storm moments in Seattle. If you guys are looking for someone, Aaron and Amy are phenomenal. And the other thing, I think venue was important, but our photographer was unbelievable. Yeah, he was good. He Jenny was like Kang, in it. Jenny Kang. She was, oh, well, that, there was that a was few her, people. That was her, yeah, yeah, so Jenny Kang, and uh, that was her assistant who was working with her that night. I don't remember her name, but Jenny Kang photography not only is she the sweetest, kindest, most caring, respectful woman, she just like totally saw our vision. So something that was important to us is we really wanted documentary style, like a documentarian to really get lots of candid happiness in the moment. And when I was going through her work, I saw a picture of a wedding that she did that had ended up raining on this person's wedding. She has an amazing picture of like, people at this wedding dancing with umbrellas like not it's completely wet just not even caring and that picture I just there's so much joy in the people's faces i was like that's what i wanted and even the pictures that she sent us back so far i'm like holy shit yeah and she nailed it she's great Jenny no, it's Kang, important. You guys, did you amazing. film your wedding yeah we had a videographer as well yeah they um I, I just, you don't, videography is so much different, you know, because you don't really know until it's done. No, no, I, I just, just, I don't, rem- I couldn't remember everything. if there was yeah. a videographer. Yeah. Um, was there anything you did to surprise Morgan? Did he surprise you? It did. Um, we did wedding gifts. I, I saved it. His wedding gift, I actually presented to him. Uh, moments before we walked down the aisle in a very private moment that was just us. And it was very sweet and very memorable. For Gasper, how did it feel going to a wedding solo? Honestly, like for me going to the wedding solo, like obviously like this is a testament to you and like your friends and your family. Like I didn't feel solo at all. Like not even one second. And I guess because you have good people in your life. So it's like the minute I got out of the hotel, the minute I got to the hotel, people took me in and were like, come with us to eat, come, you know what I mean? So like, for That's me, so like cool I never hear. felt solo. So like, it was perfectly fine. And I talked to everybody, so. It One w- of the things too, is we really felt like, um, we really felt like the wedding was so good that we were talking about it. We've been talking about it nonstop since it happened. We want, we want to have, we want to have like an annual summer party every year just to like invite people back and do something like that. I don't know if it's just a pipe dream or if it'll actually happen, but we yeah. just love hosting. It was so yeah. fun, so great. Well, loved it. Listen, it was- more, we'll do more on Patreon, but we're running out of time here, you guys. I just want to say to the the fans, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for being here. It's awesome to be. You know, you guys were with us at, when I was engaged. You were before that. with me before, even well before that. And you're with me now. We just got married. And it's so cool to talk with you guys and bring you around this journey. Yeah, it's wild because um, yes, we actually so had a whole episode of you getting engaged. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's an episode somewhere in the, in the file. Like, Joe got engaged. Yeah. Like, I think in that episode, too, I was saying some crazy shit. Like, I wanted a fleet of Escalades to pick everybody up and stuff. Yeah, that, it's best you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, but it's awesome. Glad gas. I'm glad you were there. It meant a lot. Thank you. Of course. Um, all right. Uh yeah, so check us out on the road. Uh listen to us. And if you want to hear more, we're gonna answer some more questions. If you want to hear them on Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. Thanks guys so much. Have a great night. Congratulations, Joe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>